Y estamos con nuestra charla final ya. Ahora vamos a ver si Tony nos escucha. Tony, can you hear me? I can. Great, great. Thank you, Tony, for staying with us uh, in the in our first conference in hybrid uh, format. Uh, thank you so much for your support and welcome to Aid at Aid Center. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Happy to join you. Wish it could be in person. If you if you want, you can uh, start uh, your camera. Okay. Yeah, it's it's going. I'm up in the. Uh, um, yeah, the camera's going. If you're good, would you like me to start? Yeah, please. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I wish I could be with you at, at this event in person. Unfortunately, uh, not, not possible right now for me. But uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I hope you enjoy this session. It, uh, it should be, you know, uh, informational. It's only 30 minutes, but I mean, it'll give you a good taste if you've never heard of MITRE's ENGAGE framework. Uh, I think one of the most important things to think about today is all of the breaches that are taking place, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, because uh, they continue to happen regardless of the spend that we put in place on preventative tools. So in, in MITRE's ENGAGE framework is another way to look at active defense. So, and we'll talk about that. There we go. So the agenda, who is MITRE and why should you care? A more defensive posture through active defense, MITRE attack and engage, some use case examples, just some ideas for stopping attacks and, and how we need to understand attackers. And then of course, uh, a quick wrap up of what we covered. So MITRE, any of you may have not uh, may not have heard of MITRE. MITRE is what's called an FFRDC in the United States, and that is a federally funded research and development corporation. So they're a not-for-profit organization. However, they exist at the behest of the, uh, the U.S. government to solve uh, very tough problems. And obviously, I think everybody in the room there and everybody online knows that uh, cybersecurity is a tough problem to solve. So they've spent a, a couple of decades working on this challenge. And what we're going to touch on today is uh, some of their recent efforts. So first, before we jump into MITRE, let's talk a little bit about active defense. What is it? What isn't it? And I think that's important. Active defense is really about slowing an attacker down, uh, outmaneuvering them, you know, and making that attack more difficult to uh, for them to accomplish their goals. You know, if you can slow them down and derail them, and at the same time get alerts on them throughout that entire process, uh, then it really can help you tremendously in being successful in countering, you know, or mitigating the impact of an attack. I think uh, it's an important note. You see some stories from reporters and they talk about you shouldn't do active defense because they always incorporate hacking back into active defense. And that's absolutely not true. We're not talking about doing anything outside of your own uh, enterprise where you're doing defensive measures. And active defense is a defensive measure inside your environment. Of course, I had to drop Loki on my slide simply because Loki is the uh, the god of mischief. If you're an Avengers fan, and uh, probably aware that uh, you know he does a lot of uh, um, offensive actions, you know uh, when he's fighting and other things where he can be in multiple places at once or appear that way. So it's it's a good tie into active defense in my in my opinion. But the whole concept of active defense is really around you know uh, causing the attacker to incur more cost by providing them information they can't trust. And that's something that uh, many defenders haven't done in the past. You know, taking home field advantage, understanding it's your enterprise and making the adversary's job much more difficult when they do get in. And they do get in. We need that assumption of breach mentality to think about the fact that sooner or later our defenses will fail. And how are we gonna ensure the, uh, the attacker doesn't uh, accomplish their goals inside your enterprise? Uh, just really quick on this, uh, you know, NIST has a, a guide. Uh, if you're not familiar with NIST, it is the uh, National Institute of Standards and Technologies here in the United States. Most people around the globe know them because they're the ones that built the uh, the first real.
cybersecurity framework and uh, the you know hundreds of controls in this special publication 853. The interesting point on this uh, this one that I was trying to make is it's uh, they talk a lot about using deception to counter advanced persistent threats, nation state actors. And we probably all know that uh, there's been a lot of blending between nation state actors and criminal you know, groups as well over the last uh, four or five years. So a lot more TTPs that uh, the criminals are using that mirror what uh, uh, nation state attackers are doing. So it's important to note that uh, NIST and uh, MITRE work hand in hand and uh, NIST is, is very focused on active defense and deception. So I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but I'd like to drop this slide anyway. Uh, why is active defense needed? I think it's important to look at just some of the major cases just since December of, of 2020. There's been some huge attacks that have had significant impact around the globe. I pulled these down uh, from uh, the website on the bottom. And, and by the way, uh, for the organizers there, Gabrielle and others, I can afford these slides if anybody would like them. But the link at the bottom is from the U.S. Uh, Center for Strategic and International Studies, and they uh, have been studying and capturing data on cyber attacks for some time. And these are some major ones on their website right now. There's a lot more. I just pulled down just a few. Why is this important? Because we're still spending this year alone, according to Gartner, 150.4 billion U.S. dollars this year. So regardless of the spend, you know, we're still seeing massive attacks take place successfully. So it's something we need to think about and consider. Are we doing all the right things or would we fit into one of these stories right here on the screen, you know, uh, with the way we've structured and instrumented our defensive posture in our enterprise? So it's an important point to think about. Are you doing something different? So if those same actors tried to go get into your system, would they be successful in accomplishing their goals? So MITRE ATT&CK and ENGAGE. If you're not familiar with MITRE ATT&CK, uh, it's and probably most of you are, but in case there's a few in the room that are not, MITRE ATT&CK is a very interesting program. You can see the link at the bottom. It's free for anybody around the world to utilize. And it stands for Adversarial Tactics and Techniques and Common Knowledge. So what they're doing is MITRE is collecting data from uh, attackers, so from observables across enterprises around the globe where people feed information in to MITRE as well as MITRE does their own capture too, to show you, you know, how to pick a path for the attacker that's going after you. What do they usually do? You know, do they do a, you know, a spear phishing attachment in my example here, exploitation for client execution, hooking. So the point is you can track them and go across your environment based on this, this MITRE framework, this database, and understand typically from that who that attacker is. Are they a nation state or are they a criminal group? And if they, if you identify them from MITRE attack, at that point in time, you can potentially identify who the attacker is based on the common TTPs that that attacker may, may utilize. So you would know if it's APT29, Comfy Bear, Cozy Bear, Panda Bear, whatever attacker a vendor may, may call it when you're reading a report, MITRE standardizes all those names and can help show you who's after you. That can actually help you really understand who's trying to break into your system, what are their goals? So should I spend more of my time and effort and resources onto protecting some specific high value assets simply because you know these are the type of attackers that go after you and the, that would be their goal. So it's a really important thing. MITRE ATT&CK is really cool. It's been uh, implemented by many, many companies uh, around the globe and uh, many governments as well. So if you're not familiar with it, I, I would highly recommend you take a look. It's very, very helpful. There's a, a ton of videos and MITRE has, you know, uh, uh, webinars pretty consistently. So where you can jump in and learn more about attack in different areas. So as I stated, attack puts threats in context, you know, and you can see on the left hand side from initial access execution all the way down to exfiltration and impact. It, it helps you understand what the adversary is doing inside your environment. So very, very beneficial uh, to, to dive in if you're not looking at MITRE ATT&CK and potentially see if it fits in well uh, with whatever framework you're using, as well as um, uh, the structure for your strategic program. What are your goals in that program? When an adversary gets in, are you trying to just kick them out as quickly as possible, learn from it and, and block the hole? Or do you want to study those adversaries and understand what they're trying to accomplish in your system? A lot of different things you can do here. But again, ATT&CK 
very, very helpful in understanding the adversary and their TTPs. So what is it? You, we just talked about MITRE ATT&CK. What about MITRE ENGAGE? What is ENGAGE? ENGAGE is the yang to the yin of MITRE ATT&CK. So uh, it's really helping understand what you should do if you're studying MITRE ATT&CK and looking at those patterns the attackers are doing inside your environment. ENGAGE gives you the capability to build an active defense to counter those attacks. So one side is focused on the adversary, the other side is focused on helping you build a defensive structure against those adversaries inside the environment. And we'll get into that a little bit deeper. If you're not fam familiar with the, the term in the middle or the symbol in the middle, uh, it's a Chinese symbol, yin and yang, and it just shows how two pieces are complementary and fit together well. So an attack and engage definitely uh, fit, those, fit those roles well. So engage is really that knowledge base of how to defend using engagement of the adversary inside your enterprise, inside your home field. So the MITRE engage structure, you know, really breaks things down into strategic actions and engagement actions. With the strategic side, you know, you're looking at, you know, uh, goals, approaches, and activities that are going to support your operational strategy. So what are you trying to accomplish? What do you want out of you know, uh, an active defense? So it's really on the strategic side. The engagement actions are really the steps you're going to take and the uh, instrumentation you're going to build so to help engage the adversary inside your enterprise. So it's a really cool structure and one that uh, no one had mapped out previously uh, from this path, a little bit like the security framework that NIST has and some others, but I think this is a much more complementary. Before we go any further on this, I want to point out Engage is brand new. So uh, it's a version 0.9, not even 1.0 yet. Uh, MITRE is looking for more and more teams to, you know, pun intended, engage with them and, uh, and help them make this a, a much better program. Uh, I think it's come a long way. And this came out of what used to be MITRE Shield. Instead, they've changed it to MITRE Engage and revamped the program uh, based on feedback from industry around the globe. So when you're looking at those strategic goals again, the first piece you want to do is prepare, you know, and really help you think about what do you want to accomplish if you're going to do active defense inside your environment using the Engage structure. And then the other piece, of course, is you want to understand gather that data, capture the data from your engagement side, and make sure it's being utilized to help your blue teams and your security operations center defend your environment, because that's the goal. If we're looking at adversary TTPs and building instrumentation to counter them, we wanna make sure that at, at every pass and every effort that we have when we engage an adversary, we get better at defensive side, you know, we can potentially keep them out. So if you uh, look a little deeper onto the engagement goals, so you've done the strategic piece, you've now thought about, all right, here's what I want to get out of this, here's my goals on it. Then, of course, you start to build the engagement piece out. You want to expose the adversary operations. You want to affect those operations, of course, and you want to elicit information, pull information out about those TTPs from the adversary. So you can see right from these, these three you know, um, categories here, you're really looking at you know, how this ties into attack. So you can see in an attack what an adversary does. Now you're looking inside your own environment to see if the attacker is still mirroring what MITRE attack told you they were going to do. Or have they changed? Have they evolved? And if so, that's great data to feed back into MITRE ATT&CK as well as MITRE ENGAGE. So if you look under the hood deeper at ENGAGE, uh, it's really interesting to me, the engagement piece. The expose piece, you know, you've got collection and detection, decoy artifacts and systems, detonating malware, you know, the effect side. There's a ton of pieces that you can do in there, you know, where you're, you know, you're baselining your system, you know, detonating malware again, you know, manipulating email. It's a lot of fun you can have in, in this space, you know, doing this. The illicit side, of course, is, you know, looking at and, and capturing all of that, uh, that data, you know, on an adversary. Uh, if you even look in the far right hand column, where it says personas under motivation, you know, there's, there's so much you can do there, you know, uh, to, to really engage that adversary 
and collect data so that you understand who they are. When you're building this structure out for, for an act defense, you may potentially even build, you know, as part of your, your program, build strategic personas that aren't real inside your environment. Maybe you've got a research and development division and you want to build up, you know, a campaign around that to ensure that the attacker goes into that, you know, uh, research and development, you know, fake data. So, and that's what they're trying to steal. And you start to understand their TTPs better. So tremendous amount of functionality that you can get out of this. And this is a system where you can click down, click down, click down, and really look at the direct TTPs and how it relates back to attack as well. And you're going to see a, a lot more come out. Version one, uh, they think is, is going to come out uh, sometime in the, the fourth quarter of this year. So sometime in the next three months, since we're almost in October. Hopefully it won't slip. I know there's a, a great team led by Dr. Stan Barr at MITRE in uh, McLean, Virginia, focused on this now. If we put together the engage and the strategic goals, this is a direct cut right out of the MITRE program itself. So if you look on the left-hand side, you know, your prepare and your planning and what you're trying to get out of this. And then after you've gone through the expose, affect, elicit pieces, you know, and you've built out an engagement of that adversary when they get in, then at the end, you've got another strategic goal and that's understanding, you know, well, what were they doing? You know, a hot wash is like an after action report. So, you know, uh, you and your, your team can sit down and walk through, all right, how did we engage this adversary? Where did our instrumentation fall down? What should we do better next time? Uh, what should we add? And potentially, you know, what should we pull out? What, what did we not need inside there? Because you don't want to make this a, a heavy burden and it, it doesn't need to be. Uh, and you can do this specifically around specific high value assets like Active Directory, uh, maybe some critical databases that you have. Lots of different ways to do this and lead the adversary away from those high value assets into you know, a decoy system or some other structure, or just feed incorrect information to them you know, from Active Directory in, in other systems. Easy to do today. So it can be a, a tremendous amount of fun. So here's a quick example of this. You know, looking at you know, an, an Active Directory ransomware attack sequence, if you look on the left-hand side at number one, uh, still the most common means today is a spear phishing email that comes in. Somebody may spoof an email address uh, from the CEO and send somebody that they know is going to you know, click on right away. Uh, or maybe they send it to a, a few people to see if somebody clicks on it right away. But let's just say that uh, that user does click on it and compromises that initial system. Maybe the email had a weaponized attachment in it, or maybe it was a malicious URL they clicked on in the email. Anyway, the point is that that uh, that user is compromised uh, at that point in time. And the attacker is now on that system at number one and has a initial credentials stolen. So they've got a set of credentials. One of the first things you see is quite often with cloud presence, we see a lot of organizations uh, over appropriate, you know, entitlements to, to users. So, and even if that user doesn't use all of those, and most of them don't, uh, the first thing the attacker is going to do is look to see what entitlements they have for that user. So kind of kind of scary. Uh, the next piece that attacker does, of course, is discover targets. You know, they look for targets. And one of the most common means is looking at Active Directory, hence why I, I picked this selection. Um, if you know the FireEye Mandiant I team, they're a very large and well-respected team. Uh, they stated earlier this year that the 90% of the uh, incident response investigations they do, you know, for their customers globally, all focus on, you know, where the attacker was utilizing Active Directory. So that's that's a pretty shocking statistic in an area that's that's ignored too much. Hence why I picked this one. So number three, once the adversary has stolen those credentials, looked at the targets, then they compromise those targets. What's interesting is we see, we don't see the ransomware 1.0 uh, very much. And I guess I could remove that and just stick with ransomware 2.0 or uh, some companies called it multifaceted extortion. But they find that domain admin PC, they move laterally, they steal credentials, they create persistence. And uh, unfortunately, they also encrypt high value targets and they steal and exfiltrate data. So if somebody decides they're not paying the ransom, the attacker could say, oh, well, look at this very sensitive intellectual property that I've stolen from your environment. And uh, now I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, 
share that on the web to embarrass you or you know financially hurt the company since it could be their intellectual property. So that's what we're seeing most of the time is ransomware 2.0. But the point is that you know uh, these attacks are common and you can take components of, of what I have, a, have up here for an example and relate them back to uh, many of the attacks uh, in the past year that have been uh, you know huge impact uh, around the globe to multinational companies. So what do we do? So we look at this, we tie it into, you know, MITRE attack. We, we try to look at the TTPs. How do we counter this? Well, hopefully you have an assumption of breach mentality. And with that assumption of breach mentality, then, you know, you can uh, uh, turn around and realize you're going to get breached. So you've been looking at attack. You've built an instrumentation for engage. So we would add in you know, components for derailing that attack across the board, adding decoy assets that, uh, you know, the adversary does a scan, uh, they query active directory, they try to get real information. And instead, you know, you've got uh, an engaged structure built and you provide deceptive information back to them. They don't even see who the real administrators are. And maybe you even lead them off to a decoy uh, domain controller. Lots of things you can do there. You can deflect exploits. So, you know, someone scans a system and, uh, you know, you can potentially take all the uh, ports that shouldn't be open on that system and you can deflect those scans off to a decoy environment. Uh, you can hide and deny access. And that one's a, a lot of fun. And we're seeing this more and more frequently where you hide all the real credentials. And, uh, you know, the only thing an attacker utilizing their tools are going to find are decoy credentials that alert you and, again, lead them off into a decoy area. And the other piece that I, I really like to harp on a lot is Active Directory assessments. I, uh, I did a, a fireside chat yesterday in the United States with the Retail Health uh, ISAC Information Sharing Analysis Center with uh, the Chipotle you know, uh, uh, CISO. So who's well known used to be the, the CISO for Starbucks as well. And we talked primarily about how Active Directory is being ignored by many organizations out there today on the security side. So doing an assessment to ensure that uh, uh, Active Directory does not have credentials that shouldn't be there, attack paths that shouldn't be there, cleaning it up and uh, changing the configuration to its performance while minimizing attack paths can be very, very beneficial. So you can build all of this structure and, and much, much more into derailing those attacks. And I know I'm almost out of time here, so I'm going to move a little bit more quickly because we we wanted to take some questions. So stopping the attacks really means understanding the attackers. I still have CISOs I meet with sometimes that say attribution doesn't matter. It does matter. You, you want to understand who's attacking you, and then you're going to have a better chance to build your instrumentation to defend those high value assets inside your environment. So to do that, you really need visibility, you know, understanding and uh, reducing lateral movement paths. A lot of people aren't looking for that. They have endpoints and cloud, and they don't look at those lateral movement paths across the cloud or from the endpoint to the cloud. So it's important really to start thinking about that, whether you have an on-premise environment with your own active directory or, or some other identity service, but understand that structure and instrument to look at lateral movement paths. Uh, the big solar winds breach that took place, so it took uh, five months to find that, you know, and uh, they are a security company, good one. And when you think about that, there were you know more than a hundred other companies compromised, and none of them found it. And again, because people weren't looking for lateral movement paths, they weren't cleaning it up, and uh, they weren't reducing excessive entitlement identification and reduction. You want to clean up that attack surface. That's critically important before you're breached. So because that's going to help you, you know, to uh, strand that attacker when they do get in. And again, assumption of breach mentality is critical. So clean up those paths before the adversary gets in. Reduce that attack surface. And the last one is attack prevention and detection. You know, uh, don't let them go in and do queries to Active Directory. Update it. Give them misdirection. You know, cloak your data and encrypt it. You know, and implement credential obfuscation and bait. And again, same thing, monitor for east-west lateral movement because people today are not. So we're seeing adversaries move constantly inside an environment and people don't have the instrumentation in place to catch them. They think, I have EDR and I'm good. Well, we all know based on the headlines, we're not good with just EDR. There's a lot more to it than that. And I think this audience knows that. So in wrap up, MITRE's new engage and active defense model really gives you opportunities to engage the attackers inside your enterprise. 
Um, so it's it's not letting them just go through and, and trying to uh, you know do forensics on a system, you know, uh, and find out how they got in and where they got in. Instead, it's direct engagement with the adversary inside your system, and putting up a, enough of enough obstacles and hurdles where they're going to set off alarms going to know very, very quickly what's going on. So you can mitigate that impact and uh, they may never get to the point where they could steal data or even encrypt any systems. Uh, MITRE and NIST are both recommending a more active response to attacks. So NIST has updated uh, special publication 853, which is the controls that feed the cybersecurity framework. And then uh, MITRE has helped them with that as, as well as the public talking about active defense and engage is the next step up past that. Be creative. You can have a lot of fun with us. You know, you can change the outcome of attacks by preparing the battlefield ahead of time. And this this is a battle. We all know that. So we get hit on every day, you know, with attackers trying to get inside our network, changing the structure of how that network looks to the attacker without impacting your operations is critically important. So you can have a, a tremendous amount of fun by thinking about uh, your organization what its goals are, what it accomplishes, and then how you can, you know, uh, structure that that uh, framework so it doesn't impact operations, but it does impact the adversary through, you know, uh, an active defense. Use attack to understand gaps. We all have gaps in our defenses. So that can help you understand if this attacker comes in and these are the TTPs, oh no, I have nothing here, you know, in this area on this system to look for for you know, the TTPs for that actor, you know, that uh, we know they typically do that and I don't have any instrumentation there. So that can help you fix that. And of course, the engage for the active defense as well. But understanding them is critical if you, if you wish to, to win this daily battle. Engage was created for any type and size of organization. I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, and I don't work for MITRE, but ask me, you know, well, you know, uh, my organization's only four security people, doesn't matter doesn't matter. There's a lot you can do ahead of time, especially cleaning up Active Directory and uh, hiding credentials. It's simple to do and can have significant impact. So, well, uh, mucho gracias for your time. And, uh, and I will take, uh, take questions if we have time for it. Pregunta acá del público, la podemos traducir a Tony. I have question for you, Tony. Eh, sure. We can we, we find we find very cool to work with NASA. How was your experience working with them? Oh, it's fantastic. You know, uh, I, I really enjoyed my time with NASA, and uh, I will tell you that uh, the big problem for if you consider yourself a geek like I do was staying focused on thinking about risk management, you know, instead of just becoming completely overwhelmed, trying to understand all the scientists, technology that they're putting in place, the uh, the astronauts, you know, you, you can get very excited about, you know, uh, having conversations with them and the experiences they've had. Uh, but it was tremendously fun for me. I absolutely had a blast working with NASA. So we'd go back in an instant you know, uh, if they uh, put the structure back in place for that advisory council. Really enjoyed it. Great, great, thank you. ¿Hay alguna pregunta acá? Francisco, ¿te quería acercar a hacerla? <laughs> we have some question here. Just a minute. Okay. Hi, my name is Francisco, and I'd like to know what, what do you think about public disclosure programs or book bounty programs? Well, I like bounty programs a lot. I think they're important and really do help our community. So, uh, you know, when we have just an internal team that's looking at our enterprise, we quite often miss things. And having, you know, uh, responsible researchers out there, you know, that uh, are looking at your technology can save us, you know, from having a major compromise somewhere. You know, so I, I think that's critically important, especially for technology companies, you know, to, uh, uh, to engage with the community, talk to the community, uh, build the program out. So there's well-defined parameters. So we get uh, an equitable process 
for the patch when something is found. So the researcher gets credit for it, but at the same time, you know, we get the patch out well ahead of time. I think it's critically important as well. I, I don't like the researchers, you know, that, uh, you know, are cowboy-like in their approach where they will uh, just toss something out there, you know, without working with the company, which potentially could, you know, end up in compromise for a lot of people. But I think that that is really, really important, you know, to put bug bounty programs in place for governments, uh, large corporations, and especially tech companies, large tech companies. Great, thank you, Tony. Otra pregunta? Una más? Y... No, no more question. Thank you so much, Tony, for your support. We can hope that you can come to Chile, maybe in the near future. <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. So we'd really enjoy that. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. And thank you every, everybody for, uh, for listening and attending. You know, have a great rest of the conference. Muchas gracias, Tony. Ciao. Ciao. Muchas gracias a todos los que todavía están acá. La verdad es que fue una tarea maratónica pero lo conseguimos, de verdad que ustedes no se imaginan lo que nos costó poder volver a estar de manera presencial, así que estamos muy contentos, muchas gracias a ustedes que son el público, la comunidad a la cual nos debemos, muchas gracias a nuestros patrocinadores, que para que no se me olvide ninguno, voy a buscarlo acá inmediatamente, muchas gracias a, a Centur, a Kasperki, Deme un minuto que acá se me quedó pegado el celular. Cosas que pasan en vivo. Ahora sí. Acá está. Ah, muchas gracias. Acá está. Muchas gracias a Kasperki, a Centur, a Palo Alto, a Hot Scrambler, a eSecurity, a Nastec, a Tenable, a Sergius World, My Public Inbox a Tecnovan, a Qualis y Fortinet, ya que gracias a nuestros patrocinadores nosotros podemos llegar a ustedes y hacer posible todas estas conferencias. Este año 2021 hemos realizado 13 conferencias, vamos a realizar 13 conferencias y ahora nos quedan ya, bueno, nos queda 8.8 Brasil el 6 de octubre, pero primera vez hacemos 8.8 en Brasil, lamentablemente de manera virtual esta vez. Luego viene un club CISO que vamos a tener, el cuarto club CISO, luego viene 8.8 Enteca que esperamos hacerla de manera híbrida si así la situación actual lo permite, que va a ser el 22 23 de octubre en Santiago y fuera de eso ya nos queda 8.8 México el 29 de octubre y terminamos con el último Club CISO en diciembre así que síganos en nuestras redes y pueden encontrar toda la información relacionada a nuestras conferencias, visiten nuestra tienda tenemos libros para vender, poner un montón de cosas más y muchas gracias así que de verdad muy agradecido y volvimos, ya no nos vamos de nuevo. Muchas gracias.